All right, so we have our models now um, trained. So we have a support vector machine uh, trained model and a, and a random forest trained model. So now we'd actually like to apply that to an image. So that's going to be our focus in this video. All right, so to do that, we want to use the classify raster tool. And OK, so you basically you need to give it the raster you want to classify the definition file, which should be in where I saved it, so it's this ECD file. So we'll do the random force one first. And this will be the output name. So I'm just going to call it R R F out dot IMG. And then we have to give it the same additional raster, which is that NDVI. This has to be the same like feature space. And that's it. So that should do it as long as the model is working. So let's hit run and see what happens. And these may take some time. So what I'm going to do here is I'll just cut again, and I'll run both models. And then once they're run, I'll come back in, and we'll have a look at the output. All right, so we have our output now. On well, my machine, it took about 20 minutes to produce the random forest and support vector machine classifications for the entire scene. Um, so you may get different results on different data or obviously different machine. All right, so let's just have a look at the results just generally. Um, so um, in the output, this one is the support vector machine output. The uh, blue is water, red is developed. The dark, uh, almost black is barren, and then green is forest, and then yellow is grass. And then um, same thing for the other image. Oops, it's not on. There we go. So you can see the two outputs there. And if we toggle back and forth, you can see they do look a bit different. We'll talk about accuracy assessment in another, um, you know, in another module. But I mean, to actually know which one is better uh, or to quantify it, we would need to actually do like a formal accuracy assessment. But has having a visual look can be. Uh, can be informative. So some common classification problems I see in this, just zooming around. Um, let's zoom into an agricultural area. Turn this off. Let's, um, nope, let me turn on the image. There we go. So there's definitely confusion between the barren and developed classes, which makes sense given that they're probably very spectrally similar, right? Um, so that's definitely an issue. Another issue that I noticed was on really steep slopes, like in this area, these really dark slopes get misclassified as water because they're spectrally dark. I was hoping incor incorporating the ND value would help with that, but it really wouldn't, or really didn't in this case, at least not um, not perfectly. So any so so once you're done with a or produce a classification, how can you potentially improve it? So here are just a couple of thoughts before we move on. So one thing is to try to incorporate more data. So you could create a raster stack that has multiple layers in it that represent different criteria, and then train or, and predict to that. So for example, to deal with our water misclassification in the shadow issue, we may want to like incorporate like a topographic slope surface as a layer. Um, you might want to you can incorporate ancillary GIS data. You could maybe incorporate multi-date images. So maybe having data from like the summer and the winter, or maybe every season would be helpful. We could look at other band indices, the principal components. So in short, we incorporating data and other data layers is one common way to try to improve your classification. Actually. Another option is to just simply zoom into areas that are misclassified and collect more training data over those areas and retrain the model. So in kind of like an iterative process. Um, another option is that we could incorporate like Geobia, uh, so object-based analysis and potentially improve the results. Um, in short, there's lots of different methods to try to improve the performance of the classification. Um, and 
you know, there's not a right answer for every situation. It's really kind of case specific. I mean, a lot of this stuff is an art and a science. Um, so anyway, that's the whole classification process from training to from collecting training data to training models and then using our models to predict back to um, entire image extents. What we haven't talked about is validation, which we'll look at in, with other data and in, in other examples.